locate your phone. You can't turn your phone on the recording. Hello, my name is Alice Vandervenen, and I've been an exhibiting artist with the Rittenhouse Fine Arts uh, show for the last six or seven years, and I'm excited. Okay, we're going to be flipping that. It's great, thank you. And I'm excited to be here with you. Although, I would rather be with you in Philadelphia. Uh, the Rittenhouse Square Fine Art Show is this fabulous art show in Philadelphia. And I usually have my booth right across the road from the Rittenhouse Hotel. So, uh, greetings to all you there. We here are in Coburg, Ontario, which is just a little community along Lake Ontario, on the north shore of Lake Ontario. So we're about 150 kilometers from Toronto. So you can't miss it. You come along the lake shore. Um, if you, uh, if you get, go too far, you're in Kingston, go further and you're in Montreal. So, but we're here in Coburg and I'm excited to be with you. So this workshop is also, or sorry, this presentation also includes a workshop. And um, if you'd like to, and, and you can view it as a demo, or you can work, play, create along. And if you'd like to do that, there's just a couple simple things. You'll need a scissors, some glue, glue or tape or you could even go to uh, a needle and thread. I always sew with wire, so a needle and wire. And then um, five pieces of fabric about the size of your hand. Uh, when I say fabric, I also mean paper. Uh, it could be a bit of wrapping paper. It could be parchment paper, the document you didn't really want to look at anymore. You could flip it um, and use it. Or you could use, um, or, or textile. And um, you know, you can do just any kind of textile. I've got just some pieces here that we'll be working with. And, um, or some paper. So, yeah, so, you know, get, uh, you can collect those. And uh, we'll be doing our workshop uh, in about 10-15 um, minutes so yeah I wanted to show you my work here in my studio I have it uh, set up in the studio oh sorry one thing is if you're going to do the workshop um, also uh, so also do like a uh, take a, like one little found object thing like um, you know a stone I love how stones tell history of the earth. A washer, like a, a rusted old forgotten washer. I have a little bit of uh, ceramic here. Um, domino. A pipe organ reed. You know, just really anything. A little bit of jewelry, button. Um, stuff you're not using anymore. Or no one else is using for that matter. So, I want to um, I want to show you uh, some of the work that I have exhibited here in my studio or in part of my studio. So my work, I work a lot with uh, branches, wire, fabrics, copper, and found objects to create the delicate balance of shape and color, um, to create that balance with those things, with the underlying histories that we find in textile, in found objects, um, and, uh, and how they then work together, where the essence of that underlying history creates a new narrative. And I, it's so exciting to work this way because it's always a surprise. Um, yes, I, I uh, sketch it out 
a little, but one never knows how this is going to relate with that, or this color with that object. Um, and it's a bit like um, poem, putting a poem together, um, or cr sorry, creating a poem, but instead of words, we're using things. So here is a, a, an other piece again, working with the concept of the vessel and working with the concept of that canoe shape as being the gathering spot for all these little narratives that, um, that are created when things are put together. I used to work in a plate and uh, I used to, it, it was more specific to gather the stories of women. And um, I started this, one of my first pieces like this was I was honoring the work of my, uh, the women in my history who were in occupied Holland during, um, during World War II. And they, uh, hid people, provided refuge for people, and while we never heard those stories, because to speak of them at that time would have been, you know, was incredibly a dangerous time, we never heard those stories, but we did have all of their, um, the work of their hands. So it was, it was working uh, metaphorically, but I collected those, the work of their hands, the textiles that they created, and put it um, in like a plate, like the gathering. So that was the beginning of it. And then um, my work got larger and my plate got elongated. And so now we have this concept of vessel. So I just wanted to show um, here, it's, uh, it's more of in a, in a uh, totem. But the, the concept is still the same. Um, layering of textile, layering of found object, and placing it. I titled this piece Sequoia, uh, you know, for the, those beautiful, massive sequoia trees in California. Here are two pieces. Um, both of them are quite, they're, they're um, they're my large, they're my largest piece. Still working with the same concept of collecting items, collecting different textiles from different cultures. I have uh, some Peruvian stitching here. I have some, I use some mud cloth here, some red weaving from a, a very old kilum. Uh, some new fabric, and and then of course the wire, which uh, which is here. And I love how all together and shown in this kind of um, large area, um, there is a, a magnificent to it. And uh, this piece down here, it's called uh, titled. I titled this piece Odyssey. And I'm also using the piano hammers here. It's they're kind of fun. Um, you know, if you're if you're an artist who works with found objects, it's amazing how many people have things for you where they don't really want to throw it out, but they, you know, they don't know what to do with it, or they ask you to do something with it. And someone gave me a piano, and um, yeah. It, you know, you take apart a piano and there are these amazing felt hammers in there. And like, who knew? And then every piano hammer is a different color and different shape as well. So um, that was kind of fun. Apologies to all you pianists out there who, um, who have a hard time with this. My mother-in-law was in her time a concert pianist and uh, she loves my work except the ones with the piano hammer in it. But um, this piece I titled Odyssey for the vessel shape also really harkens to the whole uh, shape of journey, of canoe, of 
of, of um, moving, of movement. So then we'll um, look over here to this wall here. This piece is, is titled Praxis, and I put, I put the two concepts together, working with the vessel and then also working with the square, um, yeah, I get, in a way I want to say, um, you know, just the layering of the fabric. So whether you do it small or large, it doesn't matter. It, uh, you know, it all works together. So then we'll move it this way. And here's part of my studio. I paint a lot. Um, you know, like mo most of my color fields come from textile. Uh, and of course, when you have textile, you then also, um, you're also, you get to use the history and the richness of all that texture and all that. Um, but sometimes I'm after a very particular color and, you know, then I just paint. I use a lot of copper. Um, my, I order the copper, it comes out of Texas, and then I burnish it in the fire. And um, that's always fun. And then you get that richness of the different colors that the fire, you know, really shows. And then, of course, uh, my drill press. And um, uh, I use a lot of stone as well. So yeah, that's kind of kind of interesting. And our irises are just out. We've had a very cold spring here. And then of course, what I use a lot is a sewing machine. And uh, this sewing machine's been taught to go right through the copper and right through stuff. This is another piece that I just finished. It's called uh, Lexicon, and it, instead of working small, each item stacked and layered and creating the story that way, I placed each item just on its own. So there's a little bit, uh, there is like a, a stone, ceramic, piano part, this kind of tool thing, copper wire. So then it together, it then forms the story. So these pieces are all on my website and there's more on there as well. And um, if you'd like, uh, if you like, just go to my website after this is done. <laughs> And, um, and just click on the available work. And there's also one kind of neat feature that my brother um, Irving, he's a, a web designer, and he put this neat feature on where um, you can upload an image like of a space that you might wonder, will a piece look well, look good here? So a piece of, like above the Chesterfield or above a fireplace or a sideboard or, um, you know, down the hall, you can upload that image and then upload one of my pieces right there. And if it works, call me and I will ship it for free. So, um, yeah. And you'll see more pieces on my website as well, on, all under the available. So thanks for that. So, let's start creating. Okay. Just use any sheet of paper, you know, for kind of your, your table kind of thing. Any sheet of paper will do. And just reach for something. Reach for a thing, uh, a piece of fabric that you like. Like life is too short to live with or to force yourself to do to to create with something that you're not you know in love with or that you're not really sure about so 
use something, start with something that you love and start a, with a piece of fabric or a piece of paper about the size of your hand. So I got this, I'm gonna cut it just a, I'm gonna cut it down just a little bit here. I could also rip it, this is paper, so maybe I'll work, I will work a little smaller. So that's your beginning, and you like it. Now, think of, of as a writer would write a poem um, or a story, you know, we're putting things together. And everything affects, one thing always affects another thing. So your next choice of fabric, you can choose, again, whatever you like. Um, you can, you know, I'm choosing this, although, you know, just looking at it, I'm thinking, oh, that's a bit dull, even though it's all hand woven and ancient and stitched. Sometimes you might go for a bit brighter. So I'm going to be cutting some incredibly fine silk just to get that lovely sense of color. And you can, for your second piece, you can either put it right in the middle or lay it off to the side. And you don't have to glue now yet. Um, you know, you're, you're good with whatever, however it is. And then choose another piece. And I'm just using a little bit of an old piece of, not an old piece, but an, um, a piece of um, upholstery, like curtain samples. You know, you can really kind of get some fun things um, from there. So what if I, I just put it like that? So again, I'm putting it beside. And, you know, I must admit, when I'm working like this, I'm just working with oh, let's try to see how it's going to go. So, you know, no thought of masterpiece because the masterpiece emerges. And, and, and in that way, I don't know how to say this, but yeah, I always have to try to let the piece speak to me. And sometimes when I think, oh, this is going to be look so amazing, when I use it, it's like, no doesn't quite do it so but you know I'm, so I'm just kind of um, just just kind of relaxing and working I've got now three pieces down and now I could put another contrast here but you can see how I you know how I use light background very contrast here and then another monochromatic kind of light here and lay this over. And it's not really, it's not exciting me. So I will take it off and I will start becoming a little bolder. People often ask me, so where do you get your fabrics from? And truthfully, I get them all over. Like sometimes I purchase it at the textile museum. Sometimes, I buy it new at like at Fabricland or something like that. Sometimes I go through secondhand stores and purchase beautiful skirts, <laughs> size zero. And uh, I'm always asked, oh, you think that will fit you? And I'm like, I'm sure it will. Um, not, you know, wanting to tell her that I will be cutting it up. But yeah, so this time I'm going to be using a part of somebody's beautiful skirt and I'm kind of liking that but I will be cutting it so suddenly I now have four pieces of fabric down and I'm just going to be cutting it a bit smaller So, layering it, and you know, in some ways, now I've never directed a choir, 
but in some ways it must be when you're doing art it must be a bit like directing a choir like be quiet sing a bit louder you know you're trying to have everything come together like so I'm whole, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking the black is bold, is pretty bold with the white with the red but this part here it's it's like it feels a bit lacking so I'm going to put a little bit of the red over there so I will I will then I'll cut this in half so this is you know whether you were making a large five by seven or five foot by seven foot piece or a five centimeter by seven centimeter piece the concept is the same and so it's kind of fun how things can work together so how you can create a base something like this and then you you look at it and you you start to ask yourself what does it need what color is it really wanting and um, so, you know, I have this cut from a piece, uh, cut from a quilt, um, with permission and everything, of course. And uh, I will lay that over like, like this. But then you'll notice I'm, I'm losing part of, part of the white. But maybe that's okay, you know. And so it's constantly a back and forth. It's okay if we do this or that. Um, so we keep working. And then, you know, once you have your base down, and I would say this is a bit, this, you know, one, I could look at this as a bit of a base. Then you can start adding some other fabrics that are maybe not quite as bold and that you, and you don't need as much this is some kind of uh, this is a bit of a fun fabric that um, I bought in England when my husband and I went there that was kind of a, a, a lovely find sometimes when you go to different places you see uh, you know you, you just you get the sense of that culture coming out in the fabrics that you purchase so you can lay that down or you can lay it across like this and so it's like you're you're sculpting not only with fabric or textile but you're also sculpting with all the different colors and so your your color all the different concepts of art is coming out in in what you're doing so when we're working like this and you know as I'm showing you this I'm thinking oh that's not quite working crossways I'm going to put it down like this and so I'm going to put it in the middle and then like look at this piece I purchased it, it was part of a larger quilt a crazy quilt done in the 1800s and I, I purchased it at the textile museum uh, here in Toronto and it's it just has all these stitches that that speak of process and that speak of history and that speak of stories and I'm gonna put that down as well and I'll put that over so we have, we're, we're working now with a piece that's quite powerful in the contrast, the juxtaposition of darks and lights. And for that, I could add, because it's powerful like that, it's per, I could add different things. Um, you know, this is a piece of, of a very old old piece of t uh, measuring tape like one of these cloth measuring tapes 
probably before plastic was invented. And, you know, I could put it down along here and then it takes its spot and becomes part of that story. But while I'm doing that, I could, because that's old, and things don't always have to be used if they're old. I mean, you, could, you can use brand new, beautiful things as well. But while that's there, you know, the other thing, I held up this Dutch tile and, you know, this, this is like actually a roof tile. Um, I was visiting um, my cousins and they were working in the garden and they were telling me that when something breaks, like ceramic, when something ceramic breaks in Holland, they just put it in their garden. So here's a piece of tile that, yes, it could have just been made, you know, in 1950 or something like that but it could also be 400 years old. And so that kind of that mysterious story, that mysterious uh, narrative starts to come forward whenever you use things. Always placed for aesthetics, but then the richness of the story that something brings. Now, you know, here I'm caught because I really want to use it. But I'm, as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, oh, it's really a bit too dark to use. So I'm going to cut that. And I'm just going to see if there is something else. Like here is just a, a nice piece of quartz that I found um, visiting my brother and sister-in-law in North Carolina. And um, that's kind of fun. And I love how the, the angle of the quartz works with the angle of the crazy quilt. Now, I'm not even sure about the measuring, but for now, um, I'm just going to keep it for now. We'll see. You could also, if you're working, um, you could just start to play and you know, Pablo uh, Picasso was saying that it, um, how much art is, is play, not play in the kind of the, the frivolous, you know, play, but it's, it's opening up yourself to the whatever, whatever will happen. Like, that's, that's so exciting when you're doing art. So, you know, if I, if I take this, you know, if I put it here, um, then I've taken off that. But, you know, play around with what's working. I mean, maybe you need to add more. Maybe you need to add less. Um, you don't have to tape things yet, um, you know. But whatever you add to your piece, you will add it in, you will, you will add to the visual story. You will add to the color, the texture, the, you know, all of those concepts of art. But you will also add to um, just the richness of that mystery that that new narrative creates. So I'm actually going to hold it at that. I'm actually going to I'm actually going to now uh, work on the attaching. And my mother taught me how to sew and everything, but um, she she probably doesn't realize I'm using all those skills that she taught me to sew with wire. You know, in every little motor that you have, um, your vacuum cleaner, uh, your mixer, um, your fan, you know, if you just get real sick of it sometimes, just smash it apart and the most beautiful wire is in, is in here. And, um, I've even started to use some blue wire, and some motors have red wire. Um, oh, sorry, you can't. I'll just turn. Some some motors have red wire, and uh, you know, there's the blue wire. A lot of it is um, the copper color, but it's like um, I think it's called the transformer or something like that. So yeah, so I take that wire and I just needle it and thread it. Um, you can use 
glue or you can just for this workshop you can just tape it and um, yes it looks like a quilt but you don't need to it's not going to go through the laundry or nobody will check your your sewing skills I'm sure so I just you know I just push it right through and often I sew using a pair of pliers so yeah so after you've used your pliers to tear apart your motor and that piano that's not working anymore or that's hopelessly out of tune you can then just sew it all together and I'm just putting a couple stitches in but one thing that's really important with doing this kind of work um, is always to like encourage the process to show so in that case like let the bolt show and um, so in that in that case I am just going to be stitching here and I'm going to just do large kind of um, big copper stitching and I will just do you know two or three of them for this demo or for this workshop but you can see how I'm letting that stitch show and that becomes part of the visual story so once you have that done but I should just back up so you can see then eh, how how a little piece like this can be put in something uh, can be put in a vessel like that like this little little area here it that's exactly how I built it up so a piece like this has lots of built-up areas has lots of areas where I've just layered color and let that richness happen um, I'm looking around here also this piece here you can see how doing you know I did this little square here but you can see how this square is the same concept of what we just did looking over here um, oh and I should also say if you have questions just type them in and we'll uh, we'll be answering them in the, in the last um, five, ten minutes, which we're heading into now. How we present the work uh, doesn't, uh, I mean, there's many, many different ways of how one presents the work. Um, I've, I've just finished this uh, for this show as well. But again, all these pieces in here have been completed in the same way. A bit of driftwood that looks like a bone um, and I'm just like all the driftwood that that washes up it's like like the, the branch the tree branches are like the bones of the earth and then um, a, the branch wrapped with wire and the stone so these are all pieces completed the very same way that that um, we just did for this one, I just put it in um, a square. I think it's like a nine inch square. And then I framed it and this, here's a very similar piece. These two are have been framed in a gold frame. And you know, as I'm showing you, I just want to, you can see the reflection in here. My other pieces don't, have the reflection because I've been I'm using museum glass 
So if you uh, are wondering how your piece would look in um, your room with a lot of window, it, uh, I'd just like to say that it would look fantastic because <laughs> um, it's, it's all museum glass and, um, and yeah. But here's an, here is that example. Here, I took this one out of the frame. Here's that example of, you know, using this kind of building up method for presenting it like that. In preparing for um, the demo, I also did this little piece. And, you know, everything that we used, everything that you've used, has history to it. Um, this is something that it's part of a shirt that I wove for my husband when I was courting him. So he married me, I cut the shirt, it was a good deal. Um, this is like a sampler I found at a secondhand shop. But then, and I've been carefully cutting it, but then, you know, I'm seeing that it comes from Curso. And see, that's a whole history in itself as well, especially being Dutch and that kind of thing. So I would, um, I, I'm going to close this part of the presentation and then I'd, I'd love to, you know, have your questions or, or anything you have with, um, I just want to read to you one little thing that I wrote in this book and one of these books comes with, uh, a piece. So, uh, if you'd like a piece, then, you know, you get this book, um, and this is, this is what um, I wrote when I was uh, creating this book. The elements of art, color, line, texture, and shape convey some of the journeys we embark in on our lives. Our journeys travel paths known, sorry, our journeys travel paths known and unknown and bring experiences seen and unseen. The blessings are counted the goodness and the strengths of these experiences are recorded. Uh, and, you know, I, I wish you all the safety on your path and joy as you record your journey and joy as you um, enjoy the journey of other people and, and the art that that brings forward. It's art that brings joy, among other things. But yeah, so thanks so much for being here. And if you have questions, do we have questions? Yes. How do you fasten heavier items such as stone? I fasten heavier items with um, some pretty heavy, um, some industrial glue called Glues It. We get it here at. Um, in Ontario, Canada, at, in uh, home hardware, um, but any kind of industrial glue. And then I always stitch over it as well. For the, for the lighter ones, you can just use a regular kind of glue, um, you know, for the stones that aren't so heavy. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of looking for example. See here, I used I used a real heavy industrial glue, and then I stitched. Um, just I, I wired it down as well. So, mm -hmm. how do you frame your three D pieces? I frame my three D pieces in uh, like a museum quality uh, shadow box. Frames. So my frames are about three inches, th uh, three inches deep, and I mount the piece on on the acid-free foam core on the back, and and then it has um, about three inches in there to get that depth. How do you organize your fabrics? <laughs> oh, oh. Um, how do, you know, I guess the long and the short of it is, um, I want to say I don't organize it, but that's not true. 
I have a bucket of absolutely precious fabrics. I have a bucket of fabrics, oh, I know I'll use sometime. I have a bucket of fabrics that, um, these look really good together. So I say that so carefully. I had a, a you know, I was, I had a student co-op person of a couple of years ago to help. And, uh, and she's like, Alice, can I organize you? And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. And, and, and she put all my colors together, at, like all the yellow fabrics together and all the red fabrics together. And truly, it took me about half a year to just put it all straight again. <laughs> so it's not a pretty sight, but it works, yeah. So that's, um, that's, uh, those are the questions and, um, yeah, so, you know, I've got three minutes, three, four minutes left and I will just then show you some of the work again. So as I said, um, these are all on my website and uh, just click the available page and also oh yeah I forgot to tell you this all of these pieces you know what you see hanging vertical goes really wonderful um, horizontal as well and um, you know all of them have been framed to accommodate that so you know if if a piece would look better at a uh, horizontal or vertical you can just flip it um, any way you want so you can see then eh, how this is like what we just did like all little little stories then combined to make one big story and then of course you know we have these so yes, go to my website if you like, or to the Rittenhouse um, Art Square Fine Art Show website. They have mine, alicevandervenen.ca. And um, this has been an absolute um, pleasure and privilege. So um, be well. I'd much rather be with you in Philadelphia, but. It's best we do it now, this year. So, see you again soon. Bye-bye.